It started with a Border Patrol bus check, and then a Portland comedian's tweets went viral. Now Spokane is part of a national conversation, and the mayor is weighing in on it. A Washington sheriff says he will not enforce the state's new gun initiative. He calls it unconstitutional. Minimum wage workers in Idaho may see a pay increase, and that is if a new bill passes. 5 a.m. on our Wednesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. And I'm Brittany Bailey. Well, boy, I noticed it was another chilly start to our day. Some frosty windshields. I had to drive through a lot of fog mm. on the way to work, too. I'm not sure if that is still the case out there. It's been a couple of hours now, but we will check in with Evan Arani now. He is back and hopefully feeling better in the weather center this morning. I'd say I'm at moderate health. I'm in between, <laughs> but I kind of just hold steady at moderate, I'd say, for the majority of the time. Uh, good morning, guys. You touched on a couple of those main points, uh, one of them being very chilly temperatures outside. You can see on our current temperature map. We've got a lot of single digits on here. Take a look. Eight degrees in Deer Park right now. Mazama at five degrees, 11 degrees in Coeur d'Alene. So uh, these are some very chilly temperatures. We're going to warm up to the 30s as the day goes on, but it may take a little bit of time for us to get there. Uh, satellite radar is showing a little bit of cloud cover. Uh, we're looking at partly cloudy skies as the afternoon goes on. Uh, but for this morning, we are still seeing some of that fog that Brittany touched on. So right now it looks like a lot of that fog is centered around the Spokane area. For the majority of the day, we're going to see that fog kind of linger around, but as the afternoon approaches, that's when we're going to start to see uh, more of that uh, cloud cover kind of decrease and more of the sun peeking out. So we're hoping by the time we get just past the noon hour, that's when we'll start to see that occur. But otherwise, we are moving toward another dry weather day today, tomorrow, and then partially uh, towards your Friday. But uh, that's when we start to see more wet weather move in Friday into Saturday. So we're tracking all those conditions. We'll be looking at Future Tracker in just a bit to see whether or not that's going to be coming and hitting us in the form of rain or snow. For now, I'll toss things over to Amber Ruspishan, who's going to let us know what the roads look like right now. Evan, good morning. Well, if anyone drives through downtown Spokane for their morning commute, I do have a heads up for you. It looks like crews are uh, working to install a cooling unit on the old city hall across from um, the skate ribbon there. And this work actually started last night, and it won't be done until about 6 a.m., so we still have an hour left. And that means the roads are closed until then, and that starts at about Howard and goes up until... Um, uh, through Spokane Fall Boulevard up into about Monroe Street. So definitely something to keep in mind before you start your morning commute. That's all I have for now, so I will go ahead and send it back to the studio. Amber, thank you. 502 now. We have been following a viral Twitter post alleging a Portland comedian was mistreated by por uh, Border Patrol agents. Happened while he was on a Greyhound bus from Spokane. It has been a controversial story in our region as well as nationally. And now Spokane Mayor David Condon is weighing in. Well, let's first break down what happened this weekend. Mohanad El Sheke said agents pulled him off a bus at the Spokane Intermodal Center. He said they asked for papers verifying his legal status. Border Patrol later confirmed that he was in the country legally on asylum, but he gave the wrong documentation to agents. In a statement, Mayor Condon says the conversation about immigration should be held and solved on a national level. He also mentioned that Spokane is within the limit allowing Border Patrol agents to board and search vehicles. That is because Spokane is within 100 miles of the Canadian border. A Condon's statement said in part, Spokane is affected differently than many other communities when it comes to such detainments. Ultimately, that means I don't have the authority as the mayor of the city of Spokane to try to circumvent that federal law or somehow attempt to impede federal officials. Implying otherwise just provides a false sense of security for individuals who are particularly vulnerable. Condon ended his statement calling the topic of immigration controversial. He also said he appreciated people showing their concern about this situation. Border Patrol agents check the Greyhound buses at the Intermodal Center. Amtrak trains stop at that same location. And we raised the question whether agents board those trains as well. The answer is yes. We reached out to the Border Patrol. Agents tell us they go on to Amtrak trains and ask passengers the same questions they do Greyhound bus passengers. Since October 1st, Border Patrol agents have taken 36 people into custody using those checks. They did not, though, have a specific breakdown of how many of those people were on the Amtrak trains versus the Greyhound buses. 504 now, and today, congressional lawmakers from both parties will start negotiations on border security. President Trump wants a border wall, but that is something the majority of Democratic leaders do not support. The short-term funding bill passed last week keeps the government funded through February 15th. The negotiators on Capitol Hill say they are hopeful they can reach an agreement. 
A sheriff in Klickitat County says he will not enforce a new Washington state gun law. He told the Yakima Herald Republic he believes the law is unconstitutional. Back in November, voters approved initiative 1639. It raises the legal age to buy a semi-automatic rifle to 21. That measure also requires rifle buyers to complete a firearm safety course. The NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation have filed a joint lawsuit challenging that initiative. And the Lewis County Sheriff and Republic Police Chief have also said they will not enforce that new law. But Washington State Attorney General Bob Ferguson says voters made their opinion clear when they approved that initiative. My name is Alyssa Parker and I am the mother of Emily Parker, a victim of the Sandy Hook school shooting. Her daughter was killed in that mass shooting at a Connecticut elementary school back in 2012. And now Alyssa Parker and her family live in Washington state. She's backing a series of bills to make schools safer, but the bills do not call for giving teachers guns. The bills would have teachers and school staff get additional youth suicide prevention training. Rural districts would get help in handling students showing danger signs. The legislation also proposes hiring more counselors. The two Oregon ranchers whose arson convictions led to the Oregon standoff now have their grazing rights restored. It was one of former Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke's final acts before resigning. He renewed the grazing permit for Dwight and Stephen Hammond. That is according to the Oregonian. Now, last year, President Trump pardoned the father and son for setting fire to public lands. A retired government fish biologist is criticizing his former employer for ignoring a salmon crisis on the Columbia River system. Chris Pinney told our sister station in Seattle millions of tax dollars are being wasted on four dams. That is while fish continue to disappear. Well, we're doing some studies, you know, and they're just basically putting money out, saying money, money will do it. Well, money's not doing it. Well, he is now helping orca advocates in their emergency efforts to stay, save starving southern resident killer whales. Those whales depend on Columbia River salmon for survival. The Washington Secretary of State is sounding the alarm. Kim Wyman says all the Washington State records dating back generations are in jeopardy. She says that is because they're housed in a building that's just falling apart. She says the building is leaky and does not have proper fire suppression systems. On rainy days, she says the basement floods and that puts more than 200 million documents at risk. Wyman is now calling on the legislature to fund a new $108 million building to house the archives. Well, if you are a soccer fan, we have some exciting news. Today, the Seattle Sounders and Tacoma Rainiers are expected to announce plans for a new stadium in Tacoma. And that stadium will be specifically used for soccer. The two clubs already agreed to a partnership. Players have been competing under the same uh, the name Sounders 2 or S2. The home games have been at Cheney Stadium. But today's announcement could include more on a new stadium and a full rebranding of the team. Idaho workers who make minimum wage may be getting a pay raise. That's if a new bill passes. A Boise lawmaker introduced a bill that would raise Idaho's minimum wage to $12 an hour. That raise would happen by 2021. It would start with a raise to $8.25 an hour by July 1st of this year. It would then go to $10 by next July. And finally, the minimum wage would raise to $12 an hour by July 2021. Tipped employees would see their hourly wages go up from $3.35 an hour to $7.35 an hour by 2021. More than 800,000 federal workers went without pay for more than one month during the partial government shutdown, and some people were forced to sell their belongings. Others had to go to food banks for necessities. Now one congressman is introducing a new bill to withhold paychecks from the president, vice president, and members of Congress during any future government shutdowns. We want to hear what you think. Should paychecks be withheld from top government leaders during a government shutdown? Let us know by heading to krem.com slash vote or by going to the Vote Now tab on the Krem2 mobile app. Well, that bill is being introduced as the Solidarity in Salary Act of 2019. It is meant to put pressure on members of the legislative and executive branches during shutdowns. The main congressman who is proposing it says, federal workers don't get paid during a government shutdown, neither should politicians. Jared Golden has been outspoken about the need for both sides to be held accountable. So far, looks pretty <laughs> unanimous there, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't often see that on our votes, so <laughs> all right.
You can continue telling us what you think, though. It is 5.09 now. A polar vortex is bringing brutally cold and dangerous temperatures to parts of the Midwest. Frigid temperatures are forecasted across the region. Minnesota could see wind chills of up to 70 below. Ooh. The U.S. Postal Service will not deliver mail today in all or parts of five Midwest states because of the severe cold. There's no type of mail in this world or package that is worth our safety. Many businesses and schools are shut down for today. This polar vortex is serving up some of the coldest weather some regions have seen in a generation. Experts warn that frostbite can strike within minutes. Chicago is also getting a major freeze from the vortex. Today, the state is expected to have one of the coldest days in the city's history. This morning, Chicago is expected to feel 50 degrees below zero. Weather forecasters are even saying the Windy City will feel colder than Antarctica. The high temperature, the high temperature, mind you, is supposed to be 12 below zero. That is colder than some of the most notoriously frigid places on Earth. Oh man, that just sounds miserable, doesn't it? <laughs> Barrow, Alaska is the northernmost point in the United States, located above the Arctic Circle. Today it will be seven below zero, which is still warmer than Chicago. And Zackenberg Station, Greenland, which is also north of the Arctic Circle, will be 11 below. Again, still warmer than Chicago. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Nope, nope, nope. I have a lot of friends in Chicago still from going to Northwestern. Northwestern, by the way, shut, campus is shut down today, mm -hmm. both in Evanston and downtown, which never happens. So, I mean, they're just miserable. It's all I see on social media feeds for the past couple of days. So I think everyone's just hunkering down and staying inside and just don't go outside. I mean, you can't go outside. No, hopefully they got all their groceries beforehand. Yes. So they're just... You know, posting up watching some Netflix, maybe milk and bread. And <laughs> what else do you get during that eggs, milk, eggs. bread and eggs. then you make a bunch of French toast, right? Yes, Those are the perfect. ingredients. <laughs> All right, works for me. 511 now on this Wednesday. Well, another company wants to capture your heart this Valentine's Day. It is offering a twist on your typical box of candy. An astronaut just shared his photos of a beautiful phenomenon. He says the best part is sharing it with his wife. And yesterday was a beautiful sunny blue sky day, but will it continue into today? Well, it might just a little bit. I'll let you know when wet weather is expected to return and forecast.